Hello and welcome to a tutorial by Grim Grin Gaming about Unity. This is specifically about the animation uh, function within Unity. My name is Daniel. Uh, this is the first tutorial that I'm doing for Grim Grin Gaming. And let's see how it goes. So, this is my setup in Unity. Uh, as you see, I already had an animation uh, panel open or a tab. Let's close it. This is how you get it set up. You click animation and it opens up in the free form window. Um, you can now drag this anywhere you want. If you add another screen, you could put it over there. But typically people like to dock it, and to dock it, you're gonna grab the tab, this physical tab, and drag it down to wherever you want. You can put it anywhere. Um, once you have it in a place that you can put it, it'll make this little thing where it creates a uh, docked window. I'm gonna put it at the bottom here. So now I have my uh, animation tab docked at the bottom. Uh, let's go up here and let's create our first object. Let's create a cube. So now that we've created our cube, uh, I find it good practice to set the position to all zeros. So now I know exactly where that is in space. Uh, it is at the zero, zero, zero. Um, Make sure that your camera's set up so that you can see it in the game section. Uh, right now, the cube just comes up black. Uh, you can hold down the middle mouse, uh, the middle wheel to pan around. Um, but I don't like it when the cube just comes across all black. So I'm going to make a light, directional light. Again, uh, now that I know where everything that I want to light up is, I can go zero, 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 and create a light to light my cube. Why can't I ever feel a light to light my cube? E to rotate. Let's just rotate this to, to face onto the cube. W to move it. Directional lights go all over the place once they're made, so it doesn't matter how far away I put it. Um, now we can make an animation for our cube. Let's go and add a component. Go to component, add component, miscellaneous, animation now we have an animation uh, component added to the object uh, the main thing to look at is that you can add an animation clip to this so we look we don't have an animation clip so let's make one go over to the animation tab that we put up earlier let's uh, look over it real quick you have a record button which is how we will record the animation that we create uh, play will play the animation within uh, that we've created in the animation thing. It'll loop it over and over and over. Uh, you can go forward, uh, backward, and forward in keyframe. Um, this is to add a keyframe. It does have auto key keying, keyframing, which means that as you move it or change its position along the uh, timeline, it will uh, note that movement. And the last movement that you make before you switch to a different point in the timeline is what the key will remember. So let's uh, go ahead and hit record. You hit record, it's going to open up your Unity project assets. It's going to give you the chance to name your animation. Um, if you're creating a whole bunch, you're going to want to name it something that will uh, jog your memory as to what it is. So this is going to scale and rotate. So I'm going to save that. Now you see, I've got scale and rotate. I can create more new clips in here if I'm going to have a whole bunch of various clips for uh, this object. Um, but uh, I'm not going to. Uh, maybe I'll make two. Um, so now I have scale and rotate. And since it's going to just be scaling and rotating, maybe changing the position, strictly transform things, I'm going to either click and hold down and highlight everything I need. Or you can just click transform and it'll highlight everything. Um, the reason that I'm doing that is if you notice it created this red line on the timeline and that's my current position in time right now there are no keyframes for animations and if you notice there is no keyframe at the zero uh, point in time meaning that if I go to the, the 10 that's 10 milliseconds or whatever and I move this like I said it will auto keyframe that movement and now if I if I hit play it'll loop what I've done but since there is no keyframe at zero it will not move it back and forth so let's uh, get rid of this keyframe 
click on it, you have to delete once, it'll highlight everything. Delete twice, it'll delete everything. Go back to zero. Let's uh, re-highlight everything here. Force a keyframe. Now it's got a keyframe at the zero, zero, zero. So now I can go to, let's go to 30 uh, milliseconds. I don't know if it's milliseconds, but this is one second. All right, so this is half of a second. Uh, let's go and change the scale to two, two, two. So we'll double the scale. Um, let's go to one second and let's have it shrink back to normal size. So if we hit play right now, it will grow, shrink. Kind of looks like it's coming straight at you, but it's really just growing at the zero position. This is what's growing. Uh, let's stop it and let's go to one second. At one second, I am also going to key in a rotation like a top. So I want it to rotate on this axis. I want it to spin on this axis like a top. So I'm going to hit 360 and what that will do is now from the zero time to the one second time it is going to create a th it's going to complete a 360 degree rotation. So let's see what that looks like real quick by just checking out keyframes. At the 30 uh, millisecond or half a second point we can now see that it has a 180 degree rotation on the Y axis and that is because it is half of uh, the full 360 degree rotation. Um, this is what it'll look like. And if we hit play, it'll loop the uh, animated region right now, just these keyframes. It'll keep doing it over and over. Now, when you go to play this uh, animation inside of a uh, game or whatever, uh, let's end the recording. So, let's see, right now, if we were to hit play, <coughs> we'll get no animation. Why don't we get an animation? And that is because, like we talked about earlier, we have to add the actual animation to the uh, animation component. Uh, this is because you could have many different ones, etc. Um, so now that we add that, we'll go play. And now we get the animation. Now it played once. Um, what if we want it to play multiple times? So if we wanted it to loop, uh, it's called wrapping, wrap mode. Uh, but you can see it right down here. Um, so at the bottom of the animation window, you can click on default is what it'll start off as. And I guess default for me is once. Uh, if I want it to loop, I'm going to turn off maximize play just for quickness. Uh, if I want it to loop, it will now loop, meaning that the animation will not end. Uh, so that's pretty simple. And let's stop it see if we hit ping pong. Ping pong, unlike loop, means that it's going to pass itself back and forth. Uh, when I clicked loop, if you notice in the graph, you can see that it has now created uh, ghost time. Uh, creates what looks like the loop. It loops it into infinite time. Now if I hit ping pong, I get this pyramid. Uh, this can create a smoother looping motion. For instance, if you have like a guy on patrol, uh, you can just set the animation for him to go to the end destination, set the loop, and then he'll just go back and forth, back and forth, like a ping pong ball. Uh, so let's hit play. And there it is. Back and forth, back and forth, like a ping pong ball. All right, so there we go. That's a basic animation. Uh, pretty much you could set up whatever at this point. Um, just going to create a couple other things just to show you. And so let's go now and create another object. Let's create create a cylinder. So now we have a cylinder. I'm going to double its size off the bat. So now we have this big cylinder. And it is not at zero. I'm going to set it to zero. And what I'm going to do is create an animation for it. Um, you can add the component for the animation, but what I would say is that you can just go over here and hit record. I'm going to hit record, and I'm going to call this cylinder. I'm not 
confident about going. Oh, there we go. It's going this. Uh, cylinder position. And it will insert the component over here. Uh, it will insert also the current animation that you're working on or whichever animation you create when you uh, whichever animation you just created. <laughs> Alright, so again uh, I'm going to want to set the transform right now and let's do this actually. Let's uh, move it. Uh, if you look at the way that I'm viewing the world right now, I'm viewing it with the Y axis up, the Z axis to the left and the right, and uh, the X axis is the depth, so back and forth. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Z and I'm going to go negative 5 and that's way too far isn't it? Oh, that's negative 50, sorry about that. So negative 5 and that's where I'm going to start. So it's going to start there and at one second it's going to go to 5. And if I play that See, it's uh, skipping back to the beginning point because I don't really, I didn't really create a smooth animation. But since I can ping pong the animation, I don't have to. Though it would be very easy with a basic animation like this. Um, so if I go ping pong, right, and let's see if it'll play right now. Yeah, it's just gonna play those. So if I hit end to the record, and remember the animation is there and the cube will still play its animation. We can't see the cube, it's trapped inside, but here we go. So the cube grows, and even though the cube looks like it's coming towards us as this guy crosses through it, you can see that it is remaining on the zero axis. Um, so now I got this smooth back and forth pad animation. Um, and finally, just for the coolness feature, this is more done with uh, like After Effects or uh, whatever. Um, you can go to the camera and you can create an animation for the camera. So let's just uh, call it camera uh, zoom or whatever. So now we got the camera, uh, camera zoom. We're going to start it. Let's see. The X is my depth, so this will move it backwards. Start it right there. And. the two minute and 30 second mark it's gonna zoom all the way through my guys so um, just to see what that looks like it zooms in and through and again it's got that horrible uh, loop in it but I'm gonna set it to ping pong and once I set it to ping pong and the record hit play everybody's moving I'm zooming into them catch them zooming back out see it's pretty cool right so you can mess around with various different kinds of animations to put into your game, again for padding uh, guards or uh, you can have platforms that move back and forth, enemy spaceships that uh, rotate, etc. Um, that way that you don't have to do animations in uh, programs like uh, Maya or 3DS or uh, whatever, or Blender. Um, that's pretty much it. Real quick I'm going to show you another thing that I just like, <laughs> like putting on stuff. Uh, you can go to add component render and this is why I had another asset inside my thing skybox uh, you can go to skybox you need a material now go to this uh, let's see DSR is pretty cool don't see what DSR how cool is that right so that's in the asset store it's free you just go here asset store type in nebula um, it's a pretty cool asset now if I put my thing uh, it adds this and the background doesn't move because it's a skybox. So there you go, and good luck to everyone. If you liked the uh, video, please like, subscribe, comment, even if it's to tell me how terribly I did this. Uh, any feedback is always good feedback, relatively. And that's it. Have fun, good luck, and see you next time. Bye.